might be a bit late to this party, seeing as we are already quite deep into winter, at least where I am, and maybe fall looks are over, but I can't help it. I think it's always useful to take a look at upcoming seasonal trends and translate them into elements of style, things like color, texture, print, and silhouette, because this exercise really stretches our creativity muscle. So I'm actually gonna take the trends that are listed from an article in Vogue Italia, because I need to practice my Italian and I love the Italian point of view. So what they claim are the 25 top trends for 2020. Although, let's be real, 25 trends is a lot. I might stop after 10, I might get tired, I might want a snack, I don't know. But what I'm gonna do is take each of those trends, break them down into elements of style, and see what I can put together for each trend using what I have in my closet already. I'm not trying to replicate these trends or recreate runway looks to an exact T. What I'm trying to do here is see if there are any elements of style from these trends that I like and that I resonate with, and see if playing around with them can help me come up with new looks that I wouldn't have thought of before. If you like this idea, shopping your closet, understanding elements of style, you will love my upcoming live virtual workshop on December 17th. It is the last Shop Your Closet workshop of 2022. I would love to see you there. It's really fun. It's kind of like a little party of playing dress up with some really fun and wonderful people. We have two guests whose closets we shop in real time, so you can actually understand and see how elements of style can be applied for different people. So hopefully that sounds like something you're into. If not, it's all good. Maybe buy it for a friend instead because it would make a pretty awesome Christmas gift. Let's jump into these trends. First tendenza is a tutto volume, anything that has a large voluminous silhouette. So this trend here, they've got like these big faux fur coats with huge collars. They're only showing these big coats and these big pants. But I don't think this has to be for coats only. I don't think it has to do so much with the texture as it does with the silhouette. I don't do huge, huge oversized silhouettes and I don't think you need to purchase like a gigantic coat to achieve this. Okay, this for me is volume. It's not exactly the big fluffy coats that we saw in the article, but I found the coat that has sort of the biggest silhouette and I wanted to really underscore that whole sense of big volume elsewhere because if you don't have a coat but you like the idea of this volume silhouette, then try and figure out where else you can add volume in your look. So I've got my wide legs, I've added a scarf, which I think also adds a bit of that bigness factor, and I'm wearing my biggest, chunkiest sweater, and I'm not tucking it in, which will again sort of give this look a bit more of that feeling of like larger voluminous proportions and less defined. This next one is borse a balletto, which is like a bowling bag style purse. It's not so much about it being an exact bowling bag, but just having a similar shape, like a little bit of a square shape and always being held as a top handle. I could probably get away with this. I recently purchased a Loewe puzzle, which is less structured than, you know, like a traditional bowling bag. It has a little bit more slouch to it, but it does have the top handle. Do you want me to talk more about this purchase? Because I have to tell you, it was very momentous. I have been saving for a puzzle for like five years. I feel like I can't cover it all in this video because I could do like an essay on it. Let me know if you're interested. I found it secondhand with an extra 40% off because like that's literally the only way I can afford that. Calze in vista is the next trend, which means like visible socks. This is more just a styling hack or like a little visual styling trick. Wearing socks that you can see, they're more like stock though, so these like sort of thigh-high stockings. So what I would do to make this more wearable is just wear like a cute little stocking under a shorter cropped denim. I have these little tights that have, you can't really see, I'm gonna put these on. This one's really interesting, Canotiera Bianca Il Nuovo Essenziale. Instead of seeing this as the simple white tank, I would take it as simplistic styling with a very basic piece. So this could be a long sleeve white tee perhaps, or just a simple white basic tee. Okay, this is how I've styled my basic white tank top, which is essentially a basic white tee. I do have a basic white tank that looks a 
almost identical to what was seen on the runway, but it's not really realistic for the climate that I'm living in right now. So what I took from that was this element of brightness and contrast with the rest of the outfit. And I also took those elements of styling, how the t-shirt or how the tank top was styled in a really chill and relaxed way. I've foregone a belt because that really adds to the whole casual and chill factor. I'm wearing my like very old boots. And again, because my climate warrants another layer, I thought I would add this blazer, which felt a little bit unexpected because I liked that tension of like super chill, a little bit like laid back and undone, but with something that feels a bit polished. I almost feel like this is like a nod to like maybe a little bit of like a Princess Diana-ish kind of look. Little shout out to my earrings, which I've added. So these are from my most recent co-collaboration with Ana Luisa. They are a 100% recycled sterling silver base and then they're gold dipped. They are like this perfect balance to looks like this, where you're wearing a lot of basic pieces and you know, you've styled it in a little bit more casual way, but then you've got these little touches of like refinement, like the structure in the blazer, the structure in the earring. And I think they just add to these kinds of looks. So there are still some of these available. Ana Luisa also is having like around this time of year, they always have really good sales. So now is a good time if you haven't gotten your hand on them to grab them if you like. Corsetto, corset, wonderful. This one, the corset trend is definitely not so much about the corset in my opinion. But for me, it's more about the silhouette. It's more about having this tighter bodice, especially styled with things that are a little bit more voluminous elsewhere. So you don't have to have a corset. You can cinch a blazer. You could cinch a pair of high-waisted pants with a thicker belt. I happen to have a vintage bustier. I love how the bustier here was styled like over things so that it was more winter appropriate, but I personally wouldn't wear it that way because it feels a little bit too like maximalist, a little bit too much for my personal style. And personally, what I love most about my bustier is the way it just kind of frames the shoulders and the neck. So I would want to wear it in a situation where I actually can wear it just like this. So it would definitely be like some sort of going out situation. But what I would do is pair it with something that feels really laid back and that has a little bit of like loose, relaxed fit on the bottom. And then, because it's gold, I would probably just throw on a blazer. Because again, the volume and the boxiness of this blazer really comes into contrast with the sexiness and tightness of the bustier itself. Fuxa addicted. Trends with color are kind of a great thing and a not so great thing. If it's not your color or if you don't have any kind of color in your closet, it might be easy to feel left out of these color trends. But fuchsia is not my color. I'm very happy that it's not in my closet. All of the inspiration that they're showing is not just about the fuchsia, it's about how it's being worn head to toe. So what I would do is maybe try and find a punchy color in my closet. I would try and create a monochrome in a punchy color. Is this fuchsia? No, it's not even head to toe, one bright color. And you know what? That is totally okay. That's the end. <laughs> I've even already worn this outfit a couple times because I like it so much. So that's where this one will end. Still makes me happy. There we go. Shop your closet. Knitwear dalla testa ai piedi. So this is just saying like head to toe knitwear. This element to me is less about having those like really cute or inventive knitwear sets or anything like that. And it's just being clothed head to toe in the same soft and slouchy texture. Clearly not head to toe knitwear. But my top half is knitwear. Really cozy like cashmere turtleneck. These pants are less than a year old, but they've got that nice like slouchy ease factor. We're getting a very similar vibe. We're getting a very similar silhouette and uh, I am just as comfortable. Minimalismo sensuale, very 90s. So they're talking about like a very sensual kind of minimalism. And here as I'm looking at their inspiration, it's less about copying the exact, you know, pieces that we saw from the 90s, these slinky dresses or, you know, these kind of interesting cutout skirts and whatnot 
not. For me, this is really about showing the body through figure conscious silhouettes and textures that are a little bit more like stretchy and figure conscious. I feel like there is nothing more 90s than the minimalism of all of this and there's nothing more sensual than wearing a bustier out. I think any trend that is so subjective, like what makes you feel sensual, I don't think that's up to any runway to tell us what makes us feel that way. So like, I think that's also something that is important to bear in mind for this kind of trend. I love this. I would fully wear this out. Stivali al ginocchio 70s. So this is the knee-high boot that has become quite popular over the past few seasons. I have a pair of knee-high boots, which I bought last year. So I'm going to use those. However, what I think is interesting is that they're really referencing the 70s in this. If you have these older riding style boots that are a little bit lower than what is currently trending, I think that's totally okay. So what I would do instead is I would still try to pull in those 70s silhouettes. So perhaps wearing these boots with a longer kind of accordion skirt that feels a little bit like kind of retro or, you know, maybe styling them in a way that has a little bit more of like a monochrome or an analogous color play because that's how they're being styled here. Tailoring il completo sartoriale made in Italy. So this is suiting. I mean, we can't all be made in Italy. Vogue Italia, let's be real. But the thing about this tailoring is that it's kind of like this slouchy suiting. So that's what I'm going to take from this trend. The element of style that is kind of the through line for all of this is that it's just really beautifully tailored, but in a very interesting way. So Here's what I've put together for this trend. Yes, it's all black, but if you have a more varied or vibrant color palette, go for it. Throw two colors together. They don't have to match exactly. I think what's important about this trend, like I said, that element is the tailored element. So getting that silhouette, but also keeping the lines like a little bit slouchy. These pants I found secondhand. I love how they've got like a little bit more of a flare versus a wide leg silhouette. And this blazer is like seven years old. So it's not like these pieces are super trendy but when we pair them together in this way and we create a silhouette that is head to toe, slightly tailored, but still has a little bit of that slouch, then it feels quite contemporary. Y2K alias La Moda Ani 2000. So like any fashion that was really popular in the aughts, when I think of Y2K and what that means, it literally just means anything that makes absolutely no sense in your closet. You want sequins, you want faux fur, you want all the colors together, you do what you want. It's like adult Halloween, okay? So the way I'm interpreting this then is like maximal elements of style. Usually I try to keep the elements of style in my outfits to like two, maybe three, because that's a lot of visuals happening. But here, let's take my gold metallic pants with like something else that feels a little outrageous, like something that I would never put with it. Maybe a color? Color is pretty outrageous for me, so I'm gonna try doing something <laughs> that feels wild, but that is like still within my aesthetic. I am shocked, gobsmacked that I even like this outfit. <laughs> These pants, fully from the Y2K era. Actually, I think I bought them in 2011, but like you can tell the silhouette, the shine, the low waist and the like ginormous waistband ready to accept either multiple belts or one giant belt with a very obnoxious buckle that like screams 2008. Definitely happy I've kept them all these years, shopped my closet for them. Very shorts. I love this. I love shorts and I love how they're styling them actually. So here, I'm glad this is our last one because we haven't talked about the element of proportion yet. Even though it definitely was used elsewhere, I think this, especially the way it's being styled and just the fact that the trend is shorts in the winter, it kind of forces you to have these exaggerated proportions elsewhere. So that's the element that we're really playing with here is this very short proportion play. So you've got shorts because it's winter, you're gonna have this this exaggerated proportion on top, whether it's a blazer, a big sweater, you're also going to play with proportions in terms of the footwear with the short. And here is where I take issue with separating your closet out into seasons because my shorts are not here. I'm just going to use my mini skirt for this and play with that proportion and come up with something similar. Here's what I've done for my very shorts look. I think it's good. 
mini tights with boots. That's how I've chosen to style it. And then I've just got this not crazy oversized sweater. It's more the blazer that is giving that contrast in the volume and in the proportions here. So I would totally wear this in real life. Love it. So that is what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you liked it in the comments below, if it helped you kind of change your perspective on how you're going to look at trends this season. Have a wonderful rest of your day, a wonderful rest of your week. Don't forget I have those Shop Your Closet live tickets in the description box below for you. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you learned something new, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I will be back with another slow fashion video. Thank you, thank you for watching. Ciao.